all right um, traders I am back again with another video and I'm getting ready to start my Sunday webinar session today but um, before I do that I just wanted to take an opportunity to show you guys um, a couple of trade setups well actually one trade setup and we're gonna also review the video that we sent out yesterday so yesterday we made a video for YouTube um, you could go back and look at my last video prior to this one um, we talked about some trade setups and possible trades for um, for some of the crypto pairs so we're gonna go back and look at those see how they turned out um, pretty much a lot of them came in pretty good so we're gonna look at those but I just want to look at an opportunity right now with the ripple Bitcoin as you could see right here I'm looking at the daily time frame I'm using Ichimoku default settings with Williams percent R at five settings um, the setting at five basically what I'm looking for here is that you could see so what I do um, the market comes down to this strong support and resistance level. This is when this becomes relevant, um, especially what I'm getting ready to talk about here. So one thing I'll look at when the market gets to this level, one thing that we want to look at is divergence. OK, so I go to look at divergence. I use the ultimate oscillator. Boom. Kick that in. And we see there is some divergence developing. There was some nice bullish divergence developing on this pair as it continued to drop down. Now, nothing super major, if you ask me. I've seen better divergence than that, but we're going to mark this. So when we see this divergence started here, you can see them. It, it was slowly moving to the upside while the market at that same point, even we go back to this top point, this was moving all the way down. All right, so you had a slight divergence there and I don't I don't care about divergence at all until I get to a level like this support and resistance a major support and resistance level and I call this a major level because you had a nice double hit down here and if we go back further you see what it was um, it was a support level here a little bit off the level on resistance here but it could be a pretty much of a zone there so you could see that that level this level is vital all right so the market comes back to this level that's when I start paying attention to, to the divergence in the market and then I start paying to the price action because I, what I trade is levels um, so I trade LST level signal trigger when the market gets to this level area I have a level so you had that divergence and then the market moved off I'm talking about this right now because I'm getting ready to talk about this trade opportunity that we have here um, but we need to understand what happened here in the market and what's going on let me remove let me move this off of here I don't need this anymore um, we could remove it okay so we'll keep Williams on there I don't I don't use Williams a lot for um, divergence it's not the best for divergence but so what I'm looking at now so once I'm talking about the market coming down to this level what the market does is one two three continuation moves throughout so basically it does a one two three four continuation move which is an N wave if you study Ichimoku more you'll understand and know about um, the N wave um, almost talking about the same thing about Elliott wave Ichimoku has its own wave theory um, I'm gonna show you what I'm looking at here so I could go to any level but I'm gonna go from here you see where the market goes boom 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 so that's one, two, three, and continues to four. This is the end wave. All right. The market continues that wave if it breaks two. When it breaks two, we know we got a continuation of the move to the downside. All right. This helps you a lot if you learn how to really use it to your advantage. So now we're looking at one, two. We have confirmed three and now four in order for this to be a one two three four to the downside this would have to be down here this would have to continue down and pretty much break two even if it comes back to two and doesn't break it then we may be seeing that reversal in the market at this support and resistance level this main level everything is centered around that level and when we move down here if we don't break that two level which sits right on this level then you're probably not going to see the market break the level and you're going to see the market go higher. So now the one, two, three continuation, right? That was one of them. And then the one, two, three continuation means to continue to the downside has to do that. So far, I don't see that. I see this. So a one, two, three reversal would be the opposite way. So it's one, two, three is not confirmed yet. And then four, that would be an end wave to the upside. 
It's not confirmed at three, but it doesn't have to be confirmed before I take a trade or for me to know where I want to take a trade. That's because I'm using levels. I have very serious levels that I look at. So for the market to hold those levels, that's when like, OK, so we have this one level, which is the support and resistance. Two level was nothing really up here. Three came down to a level, the Kijinsen right here. All right. And you, at that point, Tinkinson and Kijinsen are flat together pretty much holding support there all right and there's other levels that I look at pretty much in the market fractals um, you know moving averages so forth so you're looking at this one two three and now for this reversal it would go that way that's what I'm looking at happening here so I'm looking at this candle looking for the close of this candle once this candle closes I put a buy entry a little bit above it put a stop loss slightly below it definitely have to trade past two so that would be my first target and then my next target would be um first I will make this my target up here and it's pretty much in line with this level all right so you need to get past that and then if you do get past that you could start looking into your cloud but when you follow Ichimoku and you use your observation theory you're going to use um let me get this here you're going to use your trend based fib extension tool all right so you're going to go one, two, three. Now, in order to be the basic movement here is going to be what what is called just a measured move. OK, so that's A, B, equal sign C, D. So D would be right up here at this level at uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 6, 6, 2, 5. That's going to be that 1.0 level, which means that this leg, let me explain this. A lot of people already know this stuff a to b which would mean i call this correction your equal sign c is going to be the same leg length as d i mean c and d are going to be the same length as a and b all right so if i took this and made a long line so watch i'll show you let me clear that if I take this level, take this line, move it up so it's pretty much even there, then I say now this point would start C because you got A, B, C are 1, 2, 3, and your target is going to be right there. All right, that's your target. That's your overall target. That's going to be a measured move, 1 to 1 ratio. So I'm looking at this trade set up based off of a few things here. Basically, basic Ichimoku. Still, we have a bearish market. Um, we haven't shown that we have a bullish market at this point, but we are starting to see signs of a reversal based off of your support resistance, your support level. And once we break some other levels, then we really know for sure. But when we see that TK crossover, that's really going to help us. Now, I would really like to be in the trade. If I'm going to trade this to the upside, I really would like to be in the trade at this point. So watching this candle where it goes and when it closes will be vital. If it closes as is, I'm pretty much in the market right there with a little entry slightly above it. Let the market pull me in. Stop loss a little bit below. Shoot for that level and then for your next target, which will be 0, 0, 0, 4, 0, 6, 6, 2, 5. That would be your target. All right. And that pretty much will line you up with this cloud. So you can really shoot for inside the cloud top of the cloud got a hundred pair moving average here so you can shoot for those levels um, you definitely want to get past the two level that's two is fluctuation if you can't get past two the market's going to pretty much range I could show you a lot of ranging markets that hit that two level and then they just start to range um, two is called fluctuation when you study Ichimoku okay so you'll learn that so Ichimoku doesn't just base everything off of these lines here it goes also to, uh, price um, time all right and those are going to be valuable so when you look at time and you look at price and where price is you look at fluctuation these are your fluctuation levels this two level here so if you look at a range and you put the midpoint that's going to be fluctuation levels all right so Ichimoku gets a little deeper than just these lines just learning these lines will help you to get in some basic Ichimoku trades if you want to get a little bit more confirmation then you learn a little bit more about Ichimoku and also you just basically even 
if you don't even learn more about Ichimoku. A lot of other things will help you to make your trade more confirmed and, and more high um, probability, as, such as your price action. All right, so that's what we're just talking about here. Um, sometimes some other indicators. Okay, I don't like a lot of indicators on my charts. I really don't use any other indicators. I use this um, Williams percent R and I use um, the ultimate oscillator for divergence. Sometimes you'll see me posting about other op indicators because I like to teach those things. But when I'm trading, I only need this on my chart. And really, I don't even need, to, to be honest with you, I don't need to even need Ichimoku on my chart. All I need is my fractals and my Williams percent R. And that is it. But since everyone thinks I'm just an Ichimoku trader, I'm going to show you just Ichimoku, right? All right, so we just break this level, and that's where we enter. So we put a buy stop slightly above this level if this candle stays as is. Now, if this candle closes higher, uh, currently, you want to be looking at that level in case the market violates it, all right? Because if the market continues and violates this level here, then we're starting to break these highs. We're start that's where we want to get into the market. But if the market doesn't violate that high right here, then it makes this low this high right here that's a little lower we can enter the market we got a slight rejection nothing major all right but you can see where the market started rejection this area here one two three all right and then I'm looking for that TK crossover to develop when that TK crossover develops now you also tell me well the market's not gonna it's not changing because your cloud you don't have all your signals blah 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 true but that doesn't mean you can't get a correction that's gonna move you up into this area here yeah maybe the market stays bearish and then goes back down but that doesn't mean that you can't trade a correction, which would have been this. So you look at this move. If you caught a move from here to here, are you going to tell me, um, oh, you can't trade that because that's not Ichimoku rules? No. That's how you trade the markets, basically. All right. And then, you know, your correction and this. Now, if this makes that one, two, three reversal, then that sets it up for the whole market to change structure and change direction. Ichimoku is not going to show you as quick as price is going to show you because these are moving averages basically and based off of time values and it has to wait for those times to develop 26 periods all that stuff so you're not going to see that happen uh, so the best thing to look at is, is your levels and then the price and then you look at everything else all right so this is where I would be looking to enter the market where this candle closes now if I don't want to give this candle a chance to close way higher than this level so I would put a buy stop here for sure if this candle closes as is then I would buy stop slightly above it but as this candle continues to move if it moves higher I want to have a buy stop set to move into the market stop loss a little lower um, you got a little bit of a thick cloud nothing major and it's not really rolling over at this point I talked about thick clouds and how to decipher what the market's doing at these strong support and resistance levels and see I like to see a big thick cloud at this kind of level but I don't have that I don't really have that I mean, I have slightly have that, but not really what I like to see, right? Because that's a good indication of the market moving back over. All right, so that's your um, Ripple Bitcoin trade. That's what I'm looking at. Um, I showed you what I showed you your target, showed you your stop loss, showed you your entry. So those are the things that you could do now. Let me define the entry a little bit more for you to help you out to understand. So one thing that I use is the Williams percent R. So I'm looking for that Williams percent R to drop down to this negative 80 level. Even if it violates the negative 80 level, if it violates negative 80, it should be violating this level down here also. All right. This level where I talked about my stop loss, because this is the lowest low of the last five periods here. And if we can't violate that level and we're violating negative 80, then we're probably probably not going to violate that level. So when the market drops down to negative 80, bounces off a of negative. So the things I'm going to be looking for are, are this. This drops down to negative 80 and then bounces signifies my trade to get into my trade I already have my levels all right I already have my entry level know where I want to get into the market that's things you need to know before you even start a trade if you don't know all your things if you don't know your stop loss your entry your target before you get into a market then why get into a market all right so next thing is if this violates negative 80 which is this level here if we violate that but we don't violate this level then that's vital and then when we come back above that signifies we're ready to take that trade so we could sit down here a little while and never violate this level really as the market violates uh, as Williams percent R violates negative 80 but when it comes back above negative 80 right here big sign to jump into the market there and watch it go all right so simple trading basic trading easy trading that's what we do all right, so I'm going to um, show you. We talked about some pairs yesterday, and 
A lot of those look pretty good right now, so we're going to look at those. Let me take you back to those. All right, so what I looked at yesterday, I have them all in green. Everything that I really, that's to me the way I trade. So I'm using TradingView and I use um, Awanda. I can trade TradingView charts with Awanda. And what I like to do is if there's a there's an asset or a pair or something that I'm looking to trade. Now, say I have them green. If I mark it green, that means there's a trade opportunity very close or like right away so if there's one that I'm not even concerned about I don't put anything with it if there's one that I need to keep my eye on then I probably make it you know make it another color like gold yellow whatever and then that means I need to keep my eye on that but then these green ones oh yeah they're they're relevant they're right now so what we looked at yesterday are these green ones so yesterday the market was here I told you that we were looking for keys and bounces so we were looking at the Bitcoin cash US dollar looking for a Kijinsen bounce right well yesterday I said if the, we were looking for the market to come down to this level at that point we were here so my entry I was stating would be at this point with a stop loss below here as the as you see the market did bounce on Kijinsen never turned around and, and now we're moving higher I said also you need to break this two level because you got a one two three and then moving higher then also shooting for your targets so I'm not going to go back and discuss everything we talked about. I'm just going to show the trade status as where they are now. This trade would have worked out for us. Most of these trades are the same ways. All right, so I'm going to look at pretty much all the ones we talked about yesterday. Same thing here. Bounced off Kijin said I'm using the, I'm, all I'm using is the default settings. The market pulls back to the level. TK crossover pretty much were flat together, but now you see a little bit of mo uh, momentum because you got angulation. Even though Kijinsen uh, are not angled, you still starting to see that momentum with the with Tinkinson short term momentum. All right, and I told you that basically we're looking for an entry above this level, just bouncing off of the, that in level here, and we got that, and we should be shooting for this target at least, and then we could go higher. Overall, probably shooting for something like this, but you know that's longer term. But immediately you would have had a little bit of profit now. All right. So that's um, US, US dollar going to ETC, US dollar, Ethereum Classic, US dollar. And we're looking at the same thing. All of these are the pretty much the same. Now, this one, I probably, I don't remember if I said I was going to trade into this. I told you that. I can remember some of this that we were going to trade into a resistance level. The market hit this level. We dropped back down. Then we attempt to break at this point. Now, it's vital if we get through this level, we're probably going to see the market move higher. Um, your entry would have been really close to the resistance level. A lot of times I don't like trading right into resistance. I like to get that pull back and then get closer. I mean, farther away from resistance so I can trade up to it and then try to break it I'm pretty much trading right at it at that point All right so that's what we looked at here um, LTC US dollar Litecoin US dollar we looked at this I already told you what your entry was right here you can see where I marked it um, I think it was like I don't know exactly what this level says 91.15 because I wanted to be a little bit above this level. You bounced exactly on Kijinsen here right and you got that negative 80 bounce that I was talking about so yesterday you probably didn't have that now today you got that negative 80 bounce you wanted to get your entry in here so that happened pretty much as design now we want to see the market continue the move I know you don't want to just barely make any profit here but we want to see that market continue got to get past your two level as stated and then your overall target would be up here as I have it marked at one point now what is that level that's 122.95 that would be your one-to-one -one ratio level that would be your measured move level all right for this trade because you have a one you have a one two three and then shooting for four up here so that's a good trade setup at this point all right making a little bit of profit on that one um omg um us dollar i probably looking at this based off of everything that i'm looking at i probably wasn't set up for the the bounce yet because I, I wanted to see because we had a strong bull bearish candle dri driving us into keatonson so I, I wanted to see something to signify that we were going to bounce here and pretty much you're going to see this could be your opportunity here with a, a bounce off of the keatonson with a bullish engulfing quite possibly all right so that could be an entry at that point and you're bouncing off of your negative 80. Um, and you shoot for your target up here. Your first target will be up there at 2.4822. And overall target, let me see where we shoot for this. So I have a one. 
um, two really big three so a target would be overall target would be like 2.6932 which would be a one-to-one -one ratio probably might not see the market get there might have issues at this point here all right but we want to see if we can get through this level here okay Monero US dollar already showed you you could see where our entry was pretty much right there at the 84.071 level we were triggered we're triggered already then you have a stop loss slightly below shooting for your target at um, your two target here and I think the overall target is this level up here at 102.706 so these are things we talked about yesterday so just go just recap and look at what they look like now and you can see where this ripple US dollar same thing entry bounce off Keatinson so all of these are Keatinson bounce trade opportunities um, basic trades that we were looking at here all right so same thing here triggered again all the trades that we talked about pretty much got triggered it's another one I talked about at this point I don't really I don't see it yet it's still in the box we're still inside this TK zone all right and I think the way we got angulation here and Keatinson Tingenson's flat if we can't break this when we're breaking this negative 80 and we can't break these levels we might see that one two three reversal here also in the market break this level you could kind of wait for it to break outside of your TK zone which will give you a better uh, higher probability trade setup but sometimes you want to catch it before it closes above that level because sometimes it takes you way far way far from the level and you're too far you might as well not even get into the trade so yesterday I told you about this one um, up coins Bitcoin now I boxed this thing in basically when this candle ended our entry should have been at this point then we should have definitely shoot to get through this level because if we're in the box we don't want to see the one two three stop here and then take us back to the upside um, this this is thick but there's a possibility we still get down to this level so I boxed this in and I didn't really give us a, a clear direction I stated what I thought could happen we, we still didn't we still were rejecting Keatinson at this point okay and when we rejected here, we could have had a better entry at this point instead of waiting for this level. Now, I believe I did tell you this level, but when this candle closed, I wasn't, the, uh, I put the video up before this candle closed. Now, had this candle closed like that, we could have taken our entry here. We would have been midterm and we would have had less of a, we'd have less risk on the table as opposed to waiting for it to get way down here. All right. So to me, that wouldn't have been, that the better setup would have been yesterday when this candle closed and then to enter at that point we're shooting for this target but I think we're gonna see a one two three reversal here he's talked about these thick clouds and so forth all right so we also talked about this um dash Bitcoin dash Bitcoin um, trying to see that turnover I don't know how far this thing's gonna go even if it does reverse looking at these support and resistance levels looking for this thing to move a little bit higher still in the reject in the rejection zone though having closed outside of the TK zone that close outside of the TK zone is going to be vital because you start to see your TK crossover also take this thing up probably to the 100 pair moving average or up to this resistance levels up here all right so not one that I'm really interested in myself I don't like when the market does a couple things and doesn't give me clear indication at levels all right here's another one we talked about we already talked about this had a rejection I told you where the entry should be the entry should have been right here where this is and we would have been entered into the trade at this point now let me look at something here. I want to just see if there's any divergence on this thing. Like to use that ultimate oscillator. It's a little bit of divergence on this thing, but also not at a major level. Let me see. Didn't draw these levels out because just the way it looks it looks like we're starting to see a, um, a reversal you can see that support level here at um, 74003 that's the support level here market tried to violate couldn't moved up higher think might see that thing come back down to this level then maybe bounce and go higher all right so let's move on just want to look at these real quick this is another one I was talking about I told you again box this in you're inside your T you don't even have to really box it because you're inside your TK zone you're looking again at possible one two three reversal all right because your one two three continuation would have to break this level 
um, if we can't break this box, if we can't break outside the TK zone, if we get a TK crossover and the market's going to move higher, you'll probably see that thing move up at least to a couple levels you could start to really look at. One would be your 100 period moving average. You got a flat little cloud right there, flat cloud here, um, support there. I mean, resistance there, and you'd have a little resistance here also. So those are levels you could look at the market moving to if you can get into a trade to the upside here off of the one, two, three reversal, bounce outside the TK zone. So you're inside your TK zone. If you close outside, that's another entry. But I like to get an entry before that because it gives me too much risk, okay? So I don't want my risk to be that big. So I like to get a trade prior to that. Now we're looking at this thing coming down to negative 80. Might see that negative 80 bounce. Got a thick cloud here. It's not rolling over at this point, but it is thick, pretty thick cloud might see that thing roll over you start to see the change in direction of the market now be careful of your levels where your trade opportunity where your trade could falter all right so be careful of those levels what else did we talk about and we just talked about um we just talked about this trade opportunity here all right with this ripple bitcoin so that's it that's all i talked about yesterday and that's all i'm talking about today all right so hopefully this helps you out again a little bit of basic ichimoku um thanks for watching the video if you like the video give me a like if you don't like it i know you're going to give me a not you don't like it you'll give me a don't like before you give me a like you know what i'm saying people who like it will usually don't even give you a like but the people that don't like it they're quick to give it to you so if you do like it try to be like the people that don't like it <laughs> give me the like if you like it if you don't like it i know i'm gonna see it so i'm not even stressing all right then I'll talk to you next time. Have a great one. God bless. So long.